Hello everyone, I'm Kyle, and in this week's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to use the RGB color sensor block with the EV3. The RGB sensor block was invented by David Gilday when he made his MindCuber robot. This is the really cool robot that solves the Rubik's Cubes and it uses this special color sensor block to scan each of the sides of the Rubik's Cube in order to solve it. The reason why he used an RGB sensor block is it expands the possible number of colors that the EV3 color sensor can see. In the standard EV3 software, we're fixed into seeing seven kind of basic colors. However, the RGB block opens up to a very wide range of colors, like somewhere on the order of uh, several millions. And I was actually fortunate enough to speak with David Gilday himself about this sensor block. So I can guarantee the most detailed and most up-to-date information on everything having to do with this sensor block. Before we go any further, I'd like to give a brief introduction on how RGB color works, courtesy of my image editing software. Now the human eye has three different color receptors and they're called cones and the three different color receptors measure red, green, or blue light. As a consequence of this we have the three primary colors of light which are red, green, and blue and you can make any color by mixing the relative intensities of these three colors which is pretty interesting. Now if you've taken any art classes you'll know that an artist will say that the three primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. That's mixing pigment which is a little bit different than mixing light. So this mixing of red, green, and blue light is the principle on which all modern LCD displays work off of. So I'll demonstrate it right now. So I'll choose red which is a pure color and you can see I can adjust the relative intensity of the red, green, and blue light in this color here. So red is all the way up and green and blue are all the way down. Now I can gradually increase green and when I get to about halfway it's orange. Now when I go all the way mixing red and green together in equal amounts gives you yellow. So I can back this back down again. Now I'll increase the blue. Increasing the blue slowly will make it closer to purple until you get a magenta color when red and blue are mixed in equal amounts. So I'll back this out again. When all three are zero you get black. I'll increase the green. When you mix green and blue you get a color called cyan and then when you mix red, green, and blue all together you get white. And you can see now that by mixing the relative intensities of red, green, and blue you can make any color possible. 16.7 million different colors to be exact. I'm going to take a second to address the lofty claim that I made in this video's title where I stated that you can use the RGB color sensor block to enable your robot to detect up to 16.7 million distinct colors. This is in fact true, sort of, to an extent. This is because the red, green, and blue relative light intensities are all measured on a scale of 256 increments. So the values range from 0 to 255, but each one has 256 different possible light intensities. And there are three different channels, like I said, red, green, and blue. So when you take those 256 different possibilities for each of the different three light intensities, red, green, and blue, you take 256 and raise it to the third power and you get 16.7 million. Now in reality you really can't detect 16.7 million different colors because you get to the point where they're so close that even a robotic eye can't distinguish the difference between all of those colors. And you also run into the problem where the colors are so close that difference in ambient light values will change how the colors are detected. So can you really detect 16.7 million distinct colors? Technically, yes, but in practice, no. However, this greatly expands the EV3's color detecting capability over the normal seven colors. In practice, your EV3 robot can probably reasonably detect about a thousand distinct colors using this RGB sensor block. Before we can program with the RGB sensor block, we need to download it from David Gilday's website. It's mindcuber.com. I'll put the link in the description box below. So once you get to that website, go down to section 2.1, install color sensor RGB block, and clicking on this link right here will give you the actual download file, which you can then import into your EV3 software. I already have a separate video which teaches you how to import third-party sensor blocks into the EV3 programming environment, so click up here if you'd like to see that video. After you have downloaded and installed the RGB sensor block, you'll find it in your EV3 programming software under the yellow sensors tab. 
it's right here and it has the same icon as the regular color sensor block. So we'll take it out to check it out. It only has one mode, which is measure RGB color. In here we have numerical outputs for the relative red light intensity, the green light intensity, and the blue light intensity. That's all there is to it. And just like any other sensor, of course, you could choose ports 1 through 4. The light intensities range from a value of 0 to 255 because each light intensity value is assigned one byte value. Now we can use this block to make a simple program that reads the relative red, green, and blue light intensities and prints them to the EV3 display so we can see the RGB value for any color that we want to measure. The first thing we're going to do is take out a block that clears the EV3 display. If you want to learn more about programming EV3 displays, I covered that in a previous tutorial and I'll put the link to that up here in the top right corner. Anyway, moving on, we're going to take out an infinite loop and inside of that, we're going to put our RGB sensor block. We're, I'm going to set mine to port 1 because that's the port that my sensor is plugged into. may vary for your sensor. After that, we're going to take out three of these text blocks. So that's 1, that's 2, and that's 3. In the A input of each text block, we're going to place the initial of one of the colors that we're measuring. So the first one we're going to put red, the second one we're going to put green for G, and then the third one is B for blue. And this is just a label that's going to display alongside the actual RGB value and on, when it's printed to the EV3 screen. We're going to take the, the relative light intensity that corresponds to each initial, so we're going to take the red numerical output from the block and plug it into the text block with the R. Then we're going to take green and pair that with the G. Then we're going to take blue and pair that with the B. And finally, we're going to print all of this to an EV3 display. So we're going to take an EV3 display block and pair one with each text block. So we're going to set this to text grid and change this to wired. By the way, this is also covered in my EV3 display video that I mentioned before. So you can definitely check that out if you want to learn more about the specifics on how this works. So then we're going to take this result and plug it into the text input of this display block. So now it's going to print the R next to the actual relative light intensity of the red color in the RGB or whatever color sam sample we're measuring. And we're going to set this to false because we don't want the EV3 to clear the screen every time. We're going to take out yet another display block and this time pair it with the G for the green value. So we're going to change this to text, grid, change this to wired, and take the result and put that as the text input. And we're going to move this one down. Instead of putting it in row 0, we're going to put this in row 2. And then we're going to put it in one final display block. So that's going to go to text, grid, again set that to wired, and we're going to take this blue and plug that into the text input for this display block. And we're going to set this to row 4. And again, set this to false because we don't want the EV3 to erase its display every single time. Anyway, this is our completed RGB view program. I have my RGB color sensor view program loaded onto the EV3 brick. So now we can start it up and see what kind of values we get. Right now, I'm over a white paper surface, and you can see the RGB values on the screen. Red and green are about even, and blue is a little bit lower. Now that makes sense because the lighting in my studio here is actually a little bit yellowish, so it's exaggerating the red and the green and decreasing the blue a little bit. So, so far we're getting values that make sense. In front of me, I have an array of different colored post-it notes that we can use to test out this RGB color sensor block. So first we'll move to this one, which is a bluish cyan color. So our expectations, we should see a high blue level, but we should also see a pretty high green level, and the red level should be very low. So let's see what we get. Now those numbers are very, very surprising. The green and the blue maybe sort of make sense, but our red value is extremely high. It's way higher than any of the other two. Now, why would that be? I'll show you something cool. So I'll back out of the program, and I'll start the program. This time, our sensor is actually going to start on the surface that we're observing. Watch what happens to the values. Now those are values that make much more sense. We have a high blue value, a pretty high green value, and a low red value. These are the kinds of colors that we would expect. We can repeat this trick with any of the colors that I've shown here. 
So as you can see, when we roll over the yellow with the program already running, we get an extremely high blue value, but red and green values that seem to make sense. However, if we restart the program and then start it over again, now we get red and green values that are approximately equal and a low blue value, which is characteristic and what we would expect with yellow. The general rule to follow when using this program is to wait until your RGB color sensor is already above the surface that it wants to measure and then you can start the program and you will get an accurate RGB color reading. Because if you start the program before you move over the surface that you want to measure and then roll the robot onto it, you're going to get nonsensical RGB color values. Using this method, we can now get accurate RGB color readings for the remaining colors. These are the RGB values that I measured when the robot's color sensor is placed over the orange post-it note. So let's use these RGB values to write a program that detects the orange. The first thing I'm going to do is take out an infinite loop, and inside the infinite loop I'm going to drop in our RGB color sensor block and set it to the correct port. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to compare the RGB values that we read off of the sensor to those that we measured when the sensor was over the orange. However, we're not going to directly compare them with an equal sign. Instead, we want to give it a little bit of a range. The reason being because the light around the sensor, that is the ambient light intensity, can affect how the sensor reads the color that it's looking at. So we're going to use these range blocks in the red data operations section to give a little bit of wiggle room for the uh, detection. So we're going to need three of these range blocks, one for each of the relative intensities of the red, the green, and the blue. And they're all by default set to inside range, which is perfect. So we're going to first start with red and plug that in as the test value, uh, and we're going to compare. So the red value that we measured when we were looking at the orange, if we want to check that out again, was 185. So let's build a little bit of a range around that. We'll make the lower bound 180, and we'll say the upper bound will be 200. So that seems like a comfortable, reasonable range. Now what was the green value that we measured? That was 165. So we can plug in this green output as the test value for this, and then we'll make the lower bound 160, and we'll make the upper bound 180. And then finally, what was the blue value that we measured? That was 72. So we can take the blue output here, plug that in as a test value and build a range around 72 so we'll say 60 as our minimum and 80 as our maximum and now we need to just set up the proper logic operations so if this is true this is true and this is true so if the red value is between this range the green value is between this range and the blue value is between this range that means we have successfully detected the correct color orange the specific shade of orange that we're looking for so we just need to set up some logic so we'll take out a logic operation here and put it in between there. We want this set to AND, which it is set to by default. Now this only has two conditions, and we have three different uh, reflected light values that we need to compare. So we'll start by comparing the red and the green. So if both the red and the green are true, which means inside of that range, this will return a true value. Then we'll use a second logic, and we'll put this at the end here. So then if this returns true, but then we check the blue and that's also within range, then it's going to give an overall true, which is going to counter our switch block here, or sorry, trigger the switch block. We'll set this to logic, and we'll put this output, the result, to control this logic switch. The bottom case here, the false case, will leave empty, because that means we haven't found our shade of orange. But if we have found our shade of orange, then we'll have the robot react in some way. So for the case of my program, I'm just going to have the robot turn its brick lights on to orange, and then I'm going to have it play a sound, so a, a sound file from the Lego. So I'll have it play this fanfare sound, and then I want it to end the program, so I'll just put in a loop interrupt block, which will just make the program terminate. So this is our program for detecting our specific shade of orange. If you want to detect another color, you can tweak these bounds and you can find the 
boundaries by using the RGB view program. But this is orange and let's see how it works. I've placed our robot back over the orange post-it note so now we can try out our orange detection program. First I want to check the RGB view program to see what our RGB values look like. Then we can switch over to our detection program and if we successfully detect orange the robot will play a sound and its brick lights will light up orange. As you can see the program successfully detected orange. Now if we try it with another color, like let's say this pink square, you'll see it won't work. Or if we try it on this blue square, again it doesn't work. So we could try again with the orange and it successfully detects the color. Remember what we said before about how the color sensor needs to start over the color that you want to detect in order for it to detect properly. Well, for some unknown reason, this program actually works when you start it off of the color patch. So I'll demonstrate. I'll start the program and I'll roll the robot by hand onto the orange square. And we can see that it successfully detects the orange square even though it didn't start on it. So let's see that again. Pretty interesting, huh? My best explanation for why this happens is that in our view program, the RGB color sensor is reading the correct R, G, and B light intensities and sending them to the robot controller. However, somewhere between the step where the robot controller receives these light intensities and they're printed to the display, something goes wrong. And whatever light intensity is supposed to be the lowest ends up getting exaggerated into a really large number. This is why when we move into the orange detection program, it ends up working because now the correct RGB RGB values from the sensor are still getting to the robot controller, but we're bypassing that display step, which fools us into thinking the RGB values are incorrect, even though they still are, and the robot can still detect orange properly. A quick disclaimer, I don't know if this block is legal for use in FLL or WRO. I recommend that you read your rulebook carefully before competition day, and if you have the opportunity, contact an official. Because this is technically third party software, I'm not sure if these competitions would actually allow you to use this software. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.